Okay, welcome all. We will call this meeting to order. Uh, the notice requirements provided for the open public meeting law has been satisfied. Notice having been properly given, said notice having been transmitted to the Courier News on Monday, April 12th, 2021, as well as posting on the city's website. Clerk, can you call the roll? Absolutely. Council members Davis. Present. McKenna. Present. McCray. Present. Mills Ransom. Present. Councilman Welsh. Thank you. Oh no. I'm here. Can, can we ask can we ask that everybody please uh, mute their uh, devices, please? Thank you. Vice President Good? Present. And Council President Hockaday. You can unmute your device, Council President Hockaday. <laughs> we have a quorum. We have a quorum. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the uh, the Citizens Budget Advisory Committee, uh, affectionately and shortly known as the CBAC, for their participation in the City of Plainfield uh, calendar year 2021 budget. Uh, we know all of you are busy professionals uh, who have other responsibilities, but uh, you've all were called to the task and, uh, and participated in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in a very vital government function uh, determining our budget. So again, thank you. You all uh, are, are definitely heroes in my eyes. Um, our second uh, item, uh, we will have our CBAC chair pre present the budget Regiment, uh, recommendations uh, on the behalf of the entire CBAC Commission. Uh, Robin Bright, you have the floor. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Council President, um, Council Members, and Administration. Um, I'd like to give recognition to the members of the 2021 Citizen Budget Advisory Committee members, Hugh Thomas, appointed by Council President Steve Hockaday. Jacqueline Robinson, appointed by Councilor, Councilwoman Jolette Mills Ransom, uh, Lillian Williams, appointed by Councilwoman Stacy Welch, Victor Harris, appointed by Councilman Sean McKenna, Walter Harris, appointed by Councilwoman Ashley Davis, and Yolanda Smith, appointed by Council Vice President Barry Good. Um, the committee overview: the entire committee team would like to extend our sincere gratitude to the MAP administration and the Plainfield City Council for including residents in the budget process. The opportunity to play a part in the city's budget process is a true sign of transparency within the administration and city council and a unique and valuable learning experience. The committee conducted four meetings to review the entire budget by department and prepared questions for the department heads that we deemed essential. The CBAC committee believes the MAP administration and the city council are making a concerted effort to stabilize tax rates while continuing to provide all needed services. We believe that all department has strived to keep their budget on par with the previous budget year and all should be complimented for their hard work in achieving this goal. While we believe most departments submitted a bare bone budget, we are offering the following suggestions we feel essential and should be considered. Um, the general budget process recommendation. Uh, we collectively feel that it would be more advantageous to the process if the CBACs were engaged earlier in the process um, to be uh, effective, um, to effectively perform the duties charged with um, via city council resolution, it is recommended that CBAC be activated early in the budget cycle to perform a meaningful review of the proposed budget prior to the budget being introduced to the public. The process should include an in-depth orientation for CBAC members to acquire a deeper understanding of the sources of funds included in the budget and all statutory items that must be included in each department's projected expense. The process should also allow for a dialogue between CBAC members and the department heads to better understand how the requested budget provides the resources necessary to achieve the goals as presented. Um, 
we're recommending that they provide an explanation for the departments that are being moved and are newly created, such as code enforcement and the parking authority, provide reports to finding the handling of union contracts, as well as salary bans for non-union contracts. Goals and objectives should directly correlate with corresponding budget and line items to better understand the allocation of funds. Uh, we ask to recommend that you provide detailed information such as roles and need for all consultant requests in each department. Goals and objectives should be more transparent and detailed. Uh, the fact that most council members did not ask questions during the hearing sets a tone that asking questions is derogatory rather than informative. Even if council members are asking questions privately or via email, which we believe most are, it would be helpful and create a picture of involvement in the process if they also ask their questions again in the open forum. Uh, the CJAC, CBAC budget recommendations and observations. Uh, the last two years were unique due to the COVID pandemic and many services that the city normally provide were cut, which we believe helped to bring a zero tax increase for the year 2020. The department of directors took a no frills approach when creating the 2021 budget, and it appears that the overall budget is relying heavily on surplus. The concern is with more COVID restrictions being lifted and more services starting to come back online, how sustainable will this approach be going forward if the surplus is not replenished. There needs to be a more straightforward explanation of revenue items and how depletion of the surplus impacts the city uh, budget rating, bond rating. Uh, more emphasis should be placed on generating additional income as a strategy, strategy to reduce the residential taxpayer burden and improve services to all segments of the city population. Uh, during the uh, budget hearings, uh, we had remarks from the police director that talked about state mandated um, expenditures specifically concerning the body cameras worn by officers. The director noted the high costs incurred um, were due to the purchase of cameras and a software contract to maintain the technology. If this project was the result of a state mandate, then it could be assumed that other communities also need to comply. If Plainfield could form a consortium with other communities, it seems logical that bulk orders would produce cost savings. Uh, this would be particularly true in ongoing software maintenance contracts. Along the same lines, the fire director spoke of cameras being installed in fire trucks for safety. While we realize that body cameras used by the police versus a fire truck camera are quite different, devices combining the hardware and particularly the software contracts could result in savings. The director of communications and technology during her prepared remarks talked about improving the use of technology throughout all departments. Specifically, she noted the goal of reducing stationary costs in all areas. The director did not elaborate on any details of this project or what the potential savings might be Throughout well, all our CPAC meetings, we know that high stationary costs for many departments. It would be beneficial if this project could be accelerated and potential savings be targeted. On the 2021 CBAC department budget recommendation for the police department, the department should have a breakdown key performance indicators of crimes for the previous year. Uh, this should be broken down citywide and by wards. Methods and efforts taken should be detailed in the public to the public, this will make sure the budget request is actually working or effective. A yearly forensic audit should be performed for the police department to evaluate what needs to be optimized and streamlined concerning operating budget costs. All new hires should reside in the city of Plainfield. Create new ways, new ways police can connect with the public, increase awareness in the community and create substations. Uh, Fire 2021 CBAC the department budget recommendation for the fire department. Um, they were basically the same as for the police department with the exception of develop it and utilize a volunteer fire corps to assist the fire department in non-emergency situations or to help with suppression events. This team could also teach fire safety to children, help with book 
keep and install smoke detectors and perform home safety checks. Additionally, this could migrate high overtime costs and physical exhaustion of the current workforce. All new highs should reside in the city of Plainfield. Develop a stronger CERT community emergency response team program for not only adults, but for teenagers as well. Uh, the 2021 CBAC Department Budget Recommendation for Information Technology. Maintain the website and keep it current. This should allow the public to navigate effortlessly and with the clear understanding of all available programs. Create a communication plan that will encourage residents to participate in civic duties such that you can fill empty commission or board positions. This will encourage more civil activism, improve community relations and prevent defunct commissions such as the environmental commission. Um, the recommendation for the economic department, conduct community surveys to understand and determine what the residents of Plainfield want and need. This will allow more alignment when developing outreach strategies. Develop marketing strategies to attract big business or a corporate flagship to Plainfield. Plainfield needs to identify additional zoning areas for businesses. Um, the uh, Department of Public Work recommendation, department should, be, should give a breakdown of revenues through violations and what those violations were, provide all businesses and revenue expected to be earned from the businesses, also provide tax abatement that is given if applicable. Um, provide plans to cut costs through shared services with other municipalities. Corporate council, Department contracts are used time and time out. Senior employees should be able to review and create contracts that are repetitious in nature. If an attorney is needed to sign off on a document, then an attorney could be hired at a fraction of the current budget for corporate counsel. A breakdown of all litigious matters and estimate of what it will cost the city, both pending and possible litigation. Um, we're recommending that for the Plainfield Library, we continue to support their current budget and operating costs. In addition, we recommend increasing the partnership and collaborations between the library and other city departments. This will provide for better services for all Plainfield residents. Um, the last recommendation we have is for the Plainfield City Council. Um, for the City Council, the CBAC is recommending that their budget be increased to support uh, an increase in city council salary to possibly hire legislative aides that will help with the day-to-day -day operations. Perform an audit of the current organizational structure for the city council, such as roles, responsibilities, and salaries to determine how we can align and optimize the municipality budget. Use the city's website and social media platform to create ward-specific platforms so residents can communicate, collaborate, and interact with their elected council persons. Implement training for all council members in Robert's Rules of Orders, as well as training in conscious bias, microaggressions, diversity, and inclusion. Conclusion. The CBAC team overwhelmingly agreed that this administration has gone above and beyond to present a budget that would not, that will not allow for an increase in residential property taxes for year 2021. This administration should be applauded for bringing a 0% increase in property tax two years in a row. We are encouraged with the number of new projects planned for the city that will ultimately help to stabilize taxes to our residential homeowners and fully support this administration and the mayor in these efforts. The CBAC team would personally like to extend gratitude to Mr. Ron West, finance director for sharing his knowledge and assistance throughout the budget review process. With the number of roads that were paved in the last two years and the handling of the pandemic crisis, it's evident that our tax dollars are being used responsibly. Thank you. Thank you so, thank you so much for that uh, thorough report. Uh, a lot to consider, um, yes. and so you'll you'll have a, a written copy of that to all the council members, correct? 
Yes, I uh, sent a uh, written copy this morning to Director Juan, Juan West and asked him to email to all council members. Great, thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. So um, we'll hear from CBAC members. Uh, you can um, we'll give the CBAC members an opportunity to speak uh, on the budget. Uh, we'll start with uh, my CBAC representative, Mr. Hugh Thompson. How are you, sir? Thank you, sir. Good, good. Hello, everyone. I just want to thank everyone for this opportunity. Um, this is a great insight into how Plainfield works. Um, we often see things happen in Plainfield. We don't know the reason why or how it came about, but having this understanding, it brings a lot of excitement and I'm definitely looking for Plainfield to be forward. Uh, I've been in Plainfield all my life and I definitely see the progression. So I wanna thank everyone for what they've, they've been doing and just keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm just gonna go in order on my screen. Um, next uh, is uh, Mrs. Yolanda Smith. You're on mute still. Good evening, um, Council um, Men and Women and um, President and Vice President. And, uh, I also wanna agree that this opportunity, I took it, it with great um, responsibility of you know, looking into the budget and having the opportunity to stress my opinion uh, with how we should move forward in Plainfield. I also um, hope that you take our recommendations uh, and implement them, um, especially where we were looking for standardization and harmonization throughout the um, different departments. We feel that that will assist in the um, cost savings that we're looking to move forward. And I know um, we'll be talking about different revenues, bringing more money into Plainfield, but also um, I stress that uh, when we meet together that we do allow the CBAC to form much earlier in this process. I know we've written all of this and you take this in stride and I hope you um, will look forward. We will look forward to your response. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Uh, Vic Harris. Uh, first, I wanna thank Councilman McKenna for giving me the opportunity to be a member of the CBAC committee. Uh, it's been very informative in helping me understand the complex inner workings of a community I've lived in for over 30 years. Uh, second, I wanna thank the CBAC team. The conversations we've all had have been very educational for all of us. Uh, particularly also, I want to thank Robin and Walter because of their prior experience that we were able to help us work through this enormous thing called the binder of the Plainfield budget. Um, and, and beyond that, I, I, I did have a, a comment. Um, as someone who has spent my career in a more corporate type environment, uh, I'd like to highlight the importance of technology deployment. Um, this could be a real money saver, and that's why corporations do it. But the reality that we found is individual department, departments are usually ill-equipped to do the necessary research and timely deployment of money-saving technology. We found much better results were attained when pure tech people would work with each of the departments and help them uh, uh, meet and, and, and get the right technology that they need and also making sure that technology was uh, compatible with what was being done by other departments. You didn't want any of these departments doing it in, in, in a vacuum. And I think that if uh, uh, we push forward the technology group that we have in the town and have them work more closely with the uh, various departments and having the council and the mayor get involved early on in the review process and make sure they're buying off on what is expected and what is the anticipated savings that uh, some real money could be saved in the long run for the town. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your comments. 
Uh, next is uh, Ms. Mrs. Jacqueline Robinson. Hi, everyone. Um, I too want to really thank um, Councilman, Councilwoman Joylette Mills Ransom for thinking of me and, and asking me to serve on this committee. It was uh, very interesting. I did not even know that this committee existed. So I commend the, the entire council and the mayor for wanting citizens to have the opportunity to review the budget. I also really just because of my day job have to just tip my hat to Ron West and Ricky Gartz because I can only imagine the pain that they suffer in trying to put together all of this information and as I call it, you know, you got you have to herd the cats when you're trying to put together a budget and I I appreciate the work that goes into this and working with people of very disparate financial backgrounds and trying to put together you know, a $90 million budget. I know how difficult that can be. So I appreciate all the work that you did. Um, I'm gonna, the, the thing that most, that, that, that most concerned me was that I didn't feel like CBAC could really, really make an impact in this budget because of the timing and when we come into the process and not fully understanding all of the revenue streams of the city and what the implications are of, or the risk factors in the revenue streams and how that could impact the budget. So it was really, one of the things I said, kept saying was, I wish we had been involved earlier and had the opportunity to really understand the revenue streams and also to have more, more in-depth conversations with the directors to really understand how the dollars being spent related to the goals, because they spent a lot of time, you can tell, in writing the goals, but it was really difficult to connect the dots between the money being spent and how that impacted the achievement of the goals. And so I really wish and hope that if I'm asked to, to participate again next year, that we are able to engage earlier and have more time to really understand how, uh, how the goals and the dollars relate to each other. Um, and the other comment that I had, and this is, is specifically for the council, I expected that all of the council members would be asking more questions of the department heads. But the way that it, it happened, it seemed like asking questions is um, viewed very as, as derogatory and contentious, where it doesn't have to be. It's just informative. And I think it, makes, it would make a better presentation if all council members ask questions so that the public understands that, that the council members are also engaged in the budget process. And I realize that you can ask questions via email, you can ask questions you know, offline, but when the, what the public sees is what happens in the meeting. So it looks like that the council may not be that engaged in the process because there's, there are no questions being asked. And so I just, and for the, for the benefit of CBAC, I think we could also we could also gain information from questions that you may be asking as well. So I just encourage that all council members ask all questions in the public forum so that CBAC members as well as the rest of the public could be could be informed by that by those questions. But again, I thank everyone. I think the committee CBAC worked very well together. I hope that you know if I'm asked to participate next year that it won't be in a virtual manner because I think a lot gets lost in this type of progress process with a virtual or on a virtual platform. It will be much better in person where you could have real dialogue between the parties. But again, th I thank everyone involved and especially uh, Cong uh, Councilwoman Mills Ransom for thinking of me in this position. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Robinson. Uh, next is uh, Lillian Williams. Ms. Lillian Williams. Hello, everyone. Good evening. 
I just want to say thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. I just want to say thank you uh, to Stacey Welch for thinking of me um, and selecting me to, uh, to be a part of this uh, CBAC. It's been a true honor and pleasure. I've learned so much and it's greatly appreciated. Um, I'm very happy with, um, with the way the committee has handled the budget. No tax increase for two years is amazing. It really speaks to the cohesiveness amongst the team. And I'm really, really happy to see that. Um, I look forward to serving next year. One playing field, one future. And thank you. Thank you. Mr. Walter Harris. Good evening, council and other uh, city officials. Um, first, I'd like to thank um, our first ward councilwoman, Honorable Ashley Davis for allowing me the opportunity to represent our, our ward and during this process, I appreciate it. Um, I'd like to thank, also thank our, congratulate our committee, our CBAC team um, for their dedication, their general concern and their natural love for the city. They did an awesome job even explaining to me as I'm a third year Plainfield resident. Uh, I would though recommend, I would like to just recommend that while we do have a surplus in our budgets, that we help, we use that to help bring Plainfield into the forefront of, of a model city for uh, a te technological, social, and economic change. I believe that uh, we're right on the cusp of being one of the best cities in the state and in the country. And um, finally, I'd just like to encourage that our constituents, our people, that they take advantage of all the services that this great city has. If we don't use the services, then you know, we don't get. More, more time we use the services, the more money we get. And also like to just end it with that, uh, the constituents uh, become more involved, push a, push a uh, council people, push the administration so we could see a vision, like put a lot of pressure on them to make sure that they say what they're gonna do. And I thank you for being a part of this process. Hopefully I'll be a part of it. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you. What a wonderful group. Did I miss anyone before we wrap it up with our, our CBAC chair? I, I thought there was might be one one CBAC member missing, perhaps. Uh, you, you you missed the um, chairperson of the CBAC. Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll, I'll finish with <laughs> I'll finish with her, even though we we started with her. Uh, you can certainly, if you have any. Who's talking? Uh, if you have any final remarks, uh, Chair Bright, you can, uh, you can. Uh, yes, again, I just want to uh, thank the City Council for providing this opportunity to regular citizens uh, to learn the process. Um, the team this year was great. This is my third time, third or fourth time serving on the CBAC. Um, I love it. It's uh, it's really an eye opener to see how our tax dollars are being allocated, um, and in relations to the services that are provided by the city. Um, you know, I the team this year was was very good. They've asked a lot of good questions, but my one suggestion to the city council would be that when choosing. Uh, members to serve on a CBAC uh, and not to slight anyone, you know, it would behoove everyone if when they thought about people they wanted to choose to serve, that those people had some type of not necessarily know about the government process, but know a little bit about it. And, you know, at least, you know, going to city council meetings, see how it worked you know, uh, know, you know, just know a little bit about government uh, the, and the process. It, I think that will help move the process along. Um, it will give us more insight on the budget and how it pertains to uh, our taxes, uh, why the money is being allocated in different directions, you know, I think it, it just would definitely serve a purpose if that happened. Um, but again, you know, I just want to reiterate what I said earlier um, to give kudos to 
the finance department and each department head for bringing us a, another budget two years in a row with a zero increase. Um, that's wonderful. I contribute that to all the, uh, the new projects that's going on that's slowly but surely going to come onto our tax roll and provide some relief for tax for residential taxpayers. You know, I, I'm looking forward to that. I think we're, you know, moving in the right direction. Um, and I just hope that we could continue to move Plainfield forward in that direction so that we can have some relief uh, when it comes to our tax base. Thanks a lot, Ch Chairman Bright, Chairwoman Bright. Uh, and thanks to all the CBAC members for their participation. Um, and uh, also uh, thanks to Director West for his stellar job once again. Um, and and to CFO Gartz, uh, your partner uh, in finance. All right, so uh, we'll now move to the citizens' participation, a total of 30 minutes. Council President, can I just ask two questions real quick? Why? Wow. And, and, and uh, first of all, they can stop complimenting Ron West. I'm just kidding, Ron. Ron Ron's, I was on CBAC, so I know how much Ron puts into this and, and the CFO in this case, uh, Ricky Gartz. But I, so I have two questions that kind of- Who are your questions for? Jumped up. Well, you know what? I'll let uh, Chairwoman Bright um, figure out who wants to answer these. One is what does starting the CBAC earlier look like? Like when, when do you start it? I mean, if you started the next CBAC tomorrow, that's way too early, but like, when do you start it and how long does it run? Um, and whoever it was that came up with that idea or the, or, the, or if there's multiple people that kind of had that idea, that's come up many times in CBACs, by the mm -hmm. way. You and I were on CBAC together, I think four years ago and, yes. and that, that came up then. And then the other one that I think is really interesting is the legislative aid idea with the council. And I don't think it's something that is like a full-time thing, but it'd be really cool to incorporate it either with college students or even better with high school students as a part-time thing so that we're, it's like a mentoring thing for, for those kids who are interested in social studies or government, or I honestly don't know what, what they call it. I think it's social studies or is it government now? All right. so let, let's and, and, and what that would look like, because I, I think that's a really interesting idea from two vantage points. One, there's some additional assistance and then they're learning while they're doing it. So however, Chairwoman Bright, you know, wants to have people answer it. Cool with me. Um, I will. Uh, Jackie, would you like to um, respond mm -hmm. to the question yeah. about uh, the start time for the feedback? Yeah. For me, uh, Councilman McKenna, it's when we were told early on that um, any substantive adjustment to the budget would mean that the process would have to start again in terms of the public public disclosures, that sort of said to, to the team that we really couldn't make any substantive change here, even if we wanted to. So for one, it would mean getting CBAC, having CBAC, have the ability to review the budget before it, that first uh, public disclosure so that if there were something CBAC wanted to, uh, wanted to make a substantive change to, it could even be considered. So that would be one thing in terms of, and I don't know what the timing of that is because I don't know when the budget process actually starts in the, within the city administration, but it would be somewhere earlier before the budget is, is presented to the public. Um, and the other would be, and, and to allow some time in there from when CBAC members are sworn in and start their duties so that there could be more interaction with uh, the CFO and the finance director to really understand the revenue streams because it's, it, it's clear that the department heads are more involved in the expense side than the revenue side. So to have the time to spend more, uh, uh, have more dialogue with, with the CFO and the finance director around the revenue streams. All right, uh, the, there was also a question regarding the legislative aids in terms of what people thought about that and that wasn't it me. can be paid. 
Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I was I don't think that Councilman McKenna really had a question. He was just making he thought it was a good idea, but maybe it tweaked a little I, bit I, to I, involve I, children. It's kind I mean, of more curiosity question. Students. Chair Bright. More, it was more of a curiosity question and as what what the rough thinking was. It may, it maybe it was just that that broad kind of a comment to be formed later, but it, it, it's an interesting idea to me to be able to make it um, a helpful yet. Let's just, it, it, I don't know if there's anybody that wanted to speak on it. it, it let's just end it there. I think that question came from Hugh. Oh, okay, so I see his camera's off. So maybe, you know, he can chime in on that at some other time and to, you know, I, I know that Hugh does some work in Newark uh, where they do have legislative aids for their council people, yeah. so uh, that, that that probably fuels some of the some of the thinking. We're a lot smaller than uh, the city of Newark, so we wouldn't be modeled after them uh, verbatim. Uh, but you know, we always look uh, around at different towns and see what they're doing, and 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 try to glean either best practices or any any tips that we can pick up to make our city better. Uh, is is also a wonder, wonderful thing. All right. Sort of. It looked like uh, CBAC member Harris, Walter Harris had his hand up. I didn't see that. Yeah, we're heavy with Harris's this year, aren't we? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, oh, go ahead. Councilman, um, Councilman. Um, yes, to your point, um, uh, Councilman McKenna, it, there, there's a, a, I think if there's a need to, to even help the councilmen themselves, y'all do a lot of things, uh, be a lot of places, and it'll be a great avenue to have a, a, a legislative aid or somebody that can help y'all with your daily routine. Or if you need to be one place and your aid is another place, be another place. Or, um, you know, just, just to have that, that, that second voice or that, 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 that backup, let's say. How it looks, you know, that's something that's be created through the, through the process. Uh, I, I, I like the idea of having a college student in political science join on or even someone in the community just that's interested in politics and see and see how the ordinances and things are are created and hold on so uh, I believe there, there's room for it to happen I think it should be room for, for it to happen even though we're not a big city as you say as a uh, north we, we can leave the, the push become a bigger city right yeah that's why I thought um, you know also the, the chair Bright's comment regarding you know, just attending meetings and, and seeing how things are done is a good 101 for, uh, for, for, the, for the budgeting process. You know, it gives some insight that I think could be helpful. Um, okay. Uh, B.A. Levinson, did you, did you wanna chime in on anything? No, no need if, if, if you don't have anything to chime in on. All right, so we'll just move to uh, public comment. Total of 30 minutes has been allocated for public comment. If you wish to be heard, hit the hand icon to be recognized or be unmuted. Give your name and address for the record. Each speaker will be given three minutes. The floor is now open. Mary Burwinkle, unmute yourself. Name and address for the record, please. Mary Burwinkle, 1785 Sleepy Hollow Lane, Plainfield. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to thank all of the citizens on CBAC. This is a big undertaking. Um, it's a wonderful thing that you did. And I agree that if there's any way to start it earlier so that people could have a better understanding of what's going on, that would be a good thing. Or maybe half the people on CBAC ought to repeat the next year. So they've seen one budget and they know what's going on the next time. Um, I think it's very valuable to do this. And some, I feel this year, I sort, this year and last year, I sort of felt as though the CBAC members were not being allowed to talk or maybe they should have or ask their own questions, but that's up to you, not me. I would also like to say that I was, I was elected to charter study back in 2012 and we met the whole year 2013. And one of our recommendations in our report at the end of 2013 was that there ought to be legislative aides for city council. And I mean, I, there, I don't know what the theory is in the cities who have them. Maybe they have more money, maybe the council and administration have a more cooperative attitude about who's gonna make policy. But 
Um, but it would be a very good idea for our part-time city council to be able to have a legislative aid. I think that's a, that's a really, really good idea. And I, I also like to say that um, there's nothing, there was nothing like the team of Mr. West and Mr. Gartz, and I'm, and I'm really sorry that Mr. Gartz is leaving, but glad Mr. West is staying. So thank you. Thank you for your comments. Looking to see if we have anyone else with their hands raised. I don't see any at the moment. Okay, we have another contestant. Name and address for the record. My name is Valicia Lowe. I'm captain of the Plain for Rescue Squad. I live at 1080 Field Avenue. Greetings. Um, I had a question. I, I mean, I, I want to say, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for involving the citizens uh, and uh, the uh, planning of the budget for the city of Plainfield. Um, I was, I just had a question in regards to supporting and the growth of and the growth of the city, um, along with the fire department, and police department, identifying things that have to be um, adjusted with them. Was there anything that was going to be planned out for the medical services within the city of Plainfield? Was that your sole question? Yes. Yeah. No, but that was it. You just want to know if, if, if can restate that. At, uh, I'm sorry. I, I wanted to know if there was any plans in regards to any support for the um, emergency medical services within the city, being that we're, we're, we are expanding, expecting ex an expansion. And um, you guys are like, look, are fi looking at the budget in that point. Okay. So in relation to our growth, you want to know what, what, what thought is given to expanding uh, the police and fire and, and uh, emergency services. Okay. Uh, yeah. Either VA Abison or Director Rest could address that. I I'm going to I'm going to uh, give this to Director West but I I don't believe that um, the EMS the that they are part of our budget. Police and fire are part of our budget, but this is not this is not an organization that is uh, that has has budget line items in our budget. Is the question would we consider adding them to the budget? Is that what's being asked? Yes. They have been in the past. That I will, that I will send over to Director West. Yeah, you know, I thought you did a, a fine job saying that uh, it's not in the, the current budget. I think that there are a number of things that would have to happen legislatively with regard to uh, the Plainfield Rescue Squad uh, and its role in financially uh, with, the, with the city. And it would be something to be looked at, uh, you know, going forward. And uh, I think the rescue squad should be coming forward with a, with formal request in terms of what it is that they are looking to, uh, to the city for, so we can give thought to how that would be done. You know, because it, that would certainly be in addition to the budget, and so it would be something we would have to figure out how to make that work, you know, because the rescue squad has certainly been very beneficial to the community. And if they are looking for support from the city financially, that's something we would have to figure out how to do. And the sooner it's on the table, uh, the, the quicker we can get to some sort of a resolution. And just to add to that, I mean, my understanding is that the Plainfield Rescue Squad is a nonprofit entity. Yes, yes it is. And I know that there are regulations prevent, that prevent us from being able to give money to nonprofit entities. So I, I guess when you say that there's some, there's you know internal work that the rescue squad would need to do, to for us to be even able to look at them as an as an organization we can, we can finance. Um, that's I think that's probably what you're referring to. 
yes, I, I was asking that question because I know in the past, I, I'm, I am new, uh, fairly new to being up in this order, but I, and I know that in the past, the Plainfield Rescue Squad was part of the city of Plainfield's budget, and I don't know what happened with that situation. That's why I was asking the question. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your comments. Uh, let's see, is there anyone else? All right, I don't see anyone else with their hands up with that. Uh, may I have a motion to close public comment? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Right, aye. 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 Any opposition or abstentions? Public comment is now closed. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved, Council President. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition or abstentions? Okay, this meeting is adjourned.